if you wanted to do it that way, you should have told me. Because the kind of array that I need to... Yeah, no, I mean, it's the best of a bad situation. But I was talking about, like, vaporizing an entire town. I'll call you back. Hello, and welcome to Office Hours, the live... Love you, bye. The live component of the facility where good old Professor Kyle obviously opens up his blast doors and allows you, all members of the general public, my lovely facility staff, security team, research assistants, professors, interns, to come in to my office, which happens to be on a grimy, futuristic street corner. Ask me any old questions you want. Science, pop culture hey, look, I'm not a super... I'm your local science educator, and I'm here to entertain and educate you the best of my ability for the next about hour or so. Today we'll be talking about a number of topics. We'll be taking your questions. We'll be talking about fusion news and how close we are. We'll be talking about some of your comments, questions, and corrections from the latest episode of The Facility, where I told you how to do your own research online. I'll also be looking at all of y'all in the chat to try to get to as many of you as possible. If you really, really, really want me to see something, you can try simping for science um, by using Super Chat, which I realize is not on this... Mo Kevin! They can't see their own chats. They... They want to see their own chats. There we go. Super Chat's up at the top there, as you can see. Yeah, no, I know. I My chair... Um, slides out from behind desks and then just like rockets to another like a rocket sled to the other part of the facility. That's how I get here so fast. Um, we have V Gamer with three eleven. Thank you, V Gamer. Center my Center Mitts with a five. Finally have time to escape the Vodlands. Hope you're having a great day, Kyle. Eh. Uh, Kaylin Andy with the Australian fourteen ninety nine. See, I can't promise I'll get to all of your super chats, but I'll try my very best to answer all your burning questions chili gaming happy to have you here uh greenstonian no i'm not using teleportation teleportation would i'd end up on the other side of the planet or out in space or something like that now like i said we'll be talking about fusion news we'll be taking some of your comments and questions from the latest episode of the facility of course if you want to continue on this conversation after this show is live you can catch it back on youtube or you can subscribe to our patreon Patreon.com slash Kyle Hill, where you get videos early, you get to talk with me on Discord every day. La, da, 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 da. What do you think about those? Huh? So, um, Richard Johnson says, let's science up in this biff. No, oh, not before Brian Ramirez. Brian Ramirez gets in here with $4.99. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Seven. Grin Reaper of Trolls with a 1999. Hey Kyle, I'm proud to announce that I'm back in school and I'm doing very well. Hope your day is going as well or better. Grin, I'm honored to have been a part of your educational journey in some way. Good luck on your studies. I hope your school has some sort of mask mandate or vaccine mandate or something. Stay safe, stay smart, get smarter in there. Come back when you have a degree and maybe I'll have a position ready for you. Uh... Pronunciation was perfect this morning. Thank you. Nora Adora with the five, who has... Oh, what is that equation as your avatar? K multiplied by mass... Uh, obser uh, mass of the observer versus... Or uh, uh, initial versus at a time step. Oh, I know this equation. Whatever. Gravity sl swing shots, that's not how you spell that. Gravity slingshots require energy to be lost. It is lost by the planet, yes. Can you rob all the planet's momentum with enough swings? Yes, the way that gravity, uh, thank you, Gareth, for the five. Whew, I like your hat. Um, the way that uh, gravity slingshots work is through the conservation of momentum. And if you um, take the right trajectory around a planet, you can steal some of that momentum and give it to your spaceship. So if you can, why am I doing, why do I keep, I don't know. You can slingshot around Jupiter, for example, um, do it in the right way, and you can add a lot of velocity to your ship. The planet loses a little bit of momentum and you gain a little bit of momentum, but a little bit of a lot of a planet's momentum is a lot for... So, losing a little bit of momentum for a giant mass, like a gas giant, it doesn't even notice. 
but that little bit of momentum is a lot for a tiny spaceship. So you get flung out around if you're taking the right trajectory, as we said, and there's mathematics for this. But, yes, you're exactly right. Eventually, with enough gravitational slingshots, you would completely stop a planet. Yeah, it's me. Yeah, I need you to write something down. Mm -hmm. Slingshot planet stoppers. I don't know. Just get to work on it, damn it. Bye. Love you. Um, we have, as usual, we have Elizabeth with the 50 says, Hey, Psy Kyle, sorry for being late. I'm at work right now. Question. Don't worry about it, Liz. Any simping goes towards our totally fine research projects here at the facility. Liz, question from my son Alex. Why does water make a bump and then a drop when it's upside down? Um, water, when it's upside down, Alex, if you have a water droplet on a surface, you can't really see it here, a water droplet on a surface, it makes a bump like this because the water is being pulled down by the acceleration due to gravity because the water has some mass it's affected by gravity and so it's pulled down but then why doesn't it pull down like a square as though the gravity was acting equally along well that's because there's also a force resisting that gravitational pull and that is uh, what we call surface tension and it's the um it's water acting to hold itself together. So if you look at water down on the smallest, smallest scales, you have atoms and molecules that are attracted to each other. And it goes all the way along the water droplet. And these attractions are pulling towards each other. And this net effect of the pulling, left, right, and up, is a net force up, which acts to counteract this force. Now, when you add these two forces together, surface tension and gravity, you get this shape You know what I mean. James Xenophantos with the Australian $15. I have so many Australian viewers. I love it. But let's pause the Super Chat so we can get to some Fusion news. You're giving me a lot of time to think about what I'm going to say, which is good because Fusion is complicated. James Xenophotos. Uh-oh. Oh, look at this. Look at Fernando here. Look at Fernando. What, what are you doing, you mad person? Um, James Xenophotos with 15. Hey, Kyle. Uh... Hi, it's Jay from Down Under. I just wanted to let you know that I really appreciate you and your passion to make these videos. First time tuning in as well. Have an amazing day. Cheers, you legend. I like the idea of, of going to Australia and just everyone calls me legend. Thank you, James. Exile with a five. Could a bigger black hole suck matter out of a smaller black hole, making it possible to for matter to leave a black hole? No, but the black holes will collide and become one bigger black hole. Um, nothing can escape. Because if you have two black holes next to each other, their event horizons are separated, which means that nothing can leave the event horizon just based on the uh, definition of the event horizon. The, the point at which, around a black hole, the escape velocity is the, uh, is the speed of light or greater. And so if they're not within each other like that, mass isn't going to leave. In fact, it can never leave. It just... They smash together millions of light years away, and eventually we use a big tube with lasers to measure gravitational waves. That won a Nobel Prize. Uh, Caution Raman with a 20 says, hello there, Science Thor. <laughs> uh, first, time, first time catching a stream. Keep up the good science. I'm doing the best that I can. I am hanging on by a... I'm fine. Fernando Rivera with the CRC 25,000. I'm going to assume that that translates to about a billion dollars. Thank you, Fernando. Uh, Fernando, uh, hey, Kyle, I couldn't ask this last time. No problem. Your climate change video got me thinking. Is there a way to remove carbon from the air? Not sure if something like that is possible. Greetings from Costa Rica. Fernando, what a great question. Yes, um, I'm actually in touch with a company that uh, we might do a video about this. Anyway, um, what you're talking about is, uh, is called in the industry, 
and in a climate science, carbon sequestration. And it's a, it's a bunch of different ways, often chemical, to take carbon out of the air. Um, trees have been doing this for millions and millions of years, um, if not billions, where uh, through chemical processes, the major not, more than 95% of a tree is made out of carbon dioxide, more specifically the carbon in the carbon dioxide in the air. So trees, through chemical processes, gas transfer and whatnot, can take carbon out of the air. What we do with carbon sequestration, what we seek to do, is mimic those same processes so we can take all the carbon out of the atmosphere that we're putting into it and put it in uh, minerals and other chemical compounds so it's like a solid thing now, and then we throw it underground forever. Thank you for your question from Nando. Again, let's... Look, it's really hard reading all these nice messages for money, okay? But we need to get... <laughs> we need to get to some fusion science. I was almost... I was, um... Who am I? I did... I did, uh... Who am I? Oh, oh, uh... Yeah, yes, yes, uh... Oh, I was gold-blooming for a second. Uh, the Ceph I am with the 999, how much energy would be required to regulate a time stream, or is time something that splits enough to be regulated? If you've seen the last Spider-Man trailer, I have no idea. I... Though multiverse theory is supported by a lot of quantum mechanics and working scientists, as far as I'm, I understand it, there's no known way to access different branches of the multiverse from one universe to another um so it's not really a how much energy question it's more of a how in general question and i don't know samuel sek 100 who had a question stuck in my head oh yeah prove it okay is a plank unit the shortest if a plank unit is the shortest length measurable in space then what's the shortest length for time as in how exactly long is now now, this is not going to be a fun answer for you, uh, and I, I'm rushing because we got to move on. But if Planck length is the shortest unit of length, the shortest unit of time is the Planck time. I'm sorry. Oh! Whoa! Exploring with Sparky with a $500 super chat. Sparky, look, 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 look at his avatar. Look at that. He's got sunglasses. He's almost, he looks like he's on the beach. Let me tell you, because I did this last time uh, when we were on Twitch. This, this crazy man did two of these back to back. So before we get to Fusion, which we will in just a second, I promise. Sparky, let me tell you about Sparky. Sparky gets up. He lives on a private island, obviously. No hair, don't care. He gets up. He He's, he's, <laughs> He's buck naked, gets up, there's no one else on the island, it doesn't matter. Feet in the sand, warm, toes, wiggle around, feel it. He likes the sand, it's not rough and coarse and gets everywhere. Why? Because he had all that sand imported. Why? Because he's so rich, he can throw $500 in my stupid face. What's the next thing he does? Still buck naked, no clothes, sunglasses. Runs straight into the water and because he's buck naked, he can, he can run at high speed because he's incredibly athletic and wealthy and he can run at high speed and body surf into the waves past the breakers passers by on a yacht it's also his yacht passers by on a yacht look look at him it looks like a shining dolphin but no it is exploring with sparky what what a psychopath Whew. but you know it's not crazy fusion <laughs> i've been nailing my transitions lately and if you're wondering why I just did that, because I like improv. And one thing that's gotten me... Creators. If... A lot of science communicators are boring to me. And I never want to be boring. So one thing that I've tried to do is, is look at comedians that I like. And, and look at comedy that I like. And try to see what makes it funny. And what they're actually doing. Now, I'm not saying I'm a comedian, but... I'm, I, I try to take little tips and tricks. When I was first learning to be a science communicator, I taught myself. I, <laughs> um, I looked at, I, I read good books. I watched good uh, 
uh, series like Carl Sagan's Cosmos, and I took notes. What is good about this? What is he doing? Uh, you know, watching varied communicators that were really good, like Adam Savage or um, Alton Brown from Good Eats and the Food Network. Why is he so good at what he does? I took down notes. And so similarly, when I watch things that make me laugh and things that keep my attention, write down the notes. Really think about what makes it interesting. And to that end, I really like improv because it's so hard to do. It's so hard to be funny off the top of your head. I got a lot of practice with it working at Nerdist with my friend Dan Casey, who is actually a comedian. And when I do little stories like that about Madman Sparky there, um, I feel like it exercises some of those muscles. And it's exciting because I don't know where I'm going. Although everything that I just said was true, of course, about that naked man body surfing, launching himself into the air. Honey, what is that? Is that a dolphin? No. It's a wealthy psychopath. I love it. Fusion. This is an actual, well, that's kind of, that's kind of embellished, but this is an actual look inside of the National Ignition Facility, the largest laser facility in the world. It's not the most powerful laser in the world. But it is the biggest, and it is the largest. How big is it, Kyle? It is the size of three football fields long. And all of this, all of these tubes and pumps and pipes, that's all just for moving around. That's all for moving around these laser beams and making them more powerful. All these laser beams eventually... The, the end goal of this huge facility is to move laser beams around and then move it on camera right there all the way to that sphere and all the way to that sphere down to just a pin point, something that could fit on the end of this amazing Graph Gear 500 pencil, the only pencil you'll ever need, not a sponsor. Um, and you might be familiar with this location if you've seen the J.J. Abrams Star Trek films as well. The National Ignition Facility is where J.J. Abrams filmed the uh, engine room scenes for the Star Trek movies. He used uh, this ignition facility, as you're seeing here, and, and yeah, hey, Kyle, doesn't that look like J.J. Abrams? Yes, that's what I'm saying. J.J. Abrams paid millions of dollars to cut a hole out of the floor of this National Laser Lab just so he could shoot up with cameras. Kyle, how do you know that? Because I was there. Because I was inside. See, you can't... The eyebrow, that's how you know. I filmed a video inside the National Ignition Facility. It is an amazing, cool place with some of the smartest people I've ever met. And some of those smartest people that I've ever met have now announced that at the National Ignition Facility, they have um, made a... Uh, WayZap says, as a European, I have no idea how long a football field is. It's 100 meters, so it's 300 meters long. Football field is about 300 feet. 300 feet is about 100 meters, 300 meters long. Three football fields. Should I have said a number of pitches? That's, that was a fan. Sorry. So the point of this whole facility is to direct very strong lasers down to a single point. What are they trying to do? They're trying to recreate the power of the sun down here on Earth. They're trying to initiate fusion. Now, if you don't know, fusion is one of two nuclear, ba nuclear physics-based processes that we look at to try to harness the power of the immense power of the nuclear to get a lot of energy out of it. Every nuclear power plant that you know of or have heard of uses nuclear fission. And that is the act of taking a big nucleus, um, which is the heart of an atom with protons and neutrons, a big nucleus, and splitting it. And when you split it, it loses some mass in these nuclear reactions. That mass is converted into energy, or energy is given off according to the mass difference. It's called a mass difference. Um, and according to E equals MC squared, just a little bit of mass, even from just a tiny, tiny nucleus, gives off a lot of energy. We harness that energy 
uh, it, it, uh, we collect it in, in terms of heat. We use that heat to boil water, that boiling water to turn to steam, that steam to turn turbines, turbines to generate electricity. Now, fission nuclear reactors are great. They're carbon neutral. They're the safest form of energy that we have, and they produce a lot of energy, not a lot of waste. But one step up from that would be nuclear fusion. Now, nuclear fusion reactions are on the other side of the nuclear physics spectrum. Instead of taking a large nucleus and splitting it in twain, you take a small nuclei, small nucleus like a hydrogen nucleus, which is just a proton and a neutron, or uh, a proton, rather, and you smash two of those together. Uh, and more specifically, you take... Um, you take isotopes of hydrogen that you've heard of before, uh, deuterium, which has one proton and one neutron, and tritium with one proton and two neutrons. And if you've, you've heard of tritium and deuterium, if you, I mean, with Spider-Man in the news, that's what Doc Ock was using to do his nuclear fusion. Now, we do it with deuterium and tritium because... Um, What's fighting us from smashing two atoms together to get fusion out of it? A thousand times more energy than you can get out of nuclear fission. What's stopping us is very, very, very strong nuclear forces holding them apart. And it gets harder to smash atoms together the bigger those atoms get. And so we use... So we use the smallest nuclei that we can get, which is hydrogen. Now, fusion energy is, the, is one of the real holy grails because, like I said, you can get a thousand times more energy out of it than a similar nuclear fission reactor. And a thousand times more energy, I mean, think about that for a second. That means one of these power plants could equate to a thousand nuclear power plants that we have today. It's incredible. Um... The, uh, the example I like to give is that the, the amount of water, if you had enough deuterium and tritium to fill up this water bottle, okay, this amount of nuclear fusion fuel would give you the same amount of energy as an entire train's worth of coal. Just this. So it's, inc it, it's, it's the second most efficient energy gener energy uh, come on energy generating process known to science only second to antimatter which is pure mass to energy conversion so what have they done forgot what pictures i have here so at the national ignition facility what they do is they fire master blast says oh wait uh Prince says, how long of a train, though? It's a big train. Shut up. All of these lasers are all pointed down at, like I said, a very, very small thing that could fit on the end of my Graph Gear 500. The only pencil you will ever need. Not a sponsor. And this little, little chamber. It's usually gold like that. And inside of that chamber is a tiny, tiny bead of deuterium and tritium. Kyle, how do you know that? Again, I was there. That's my finger. See? So this is an actual fuel assembly that I saw when I was there. See? I was there. That's me. Um, that I saw when I was there, and I'm holding it here. They don't want me to tell you this part, but that costs about the same as a new uh, Lamborghini. Just that. That's how technical this and and that's how technical and rarefied this assembly is. That's like two hundred and fifty grand. <laughs> They're like, don't tell people that. I didn't sign anything, or maybe I did. Uh oh. Anyway, so all of these lasers come down at this little ball of fuel inside. That's the that's a cutaway of the cylinder. So that, so if you cut that cylinder in half. You see that inside. 
I forgot something. Beep boop. What am I? There you are. Ah. So all of this, all these, so we, we have the lasers. They're all coming down on that little assembly, this little capsule, this little bead of fuel. What is it trying to do? It's trying to initiate what is called inertial confinement fusion. Now, it's a very fancy science word for something pretty simple. You have fuel here in blue, and around it is some sort of uh, thin casing. What we're going to do is we're going to heat up that casing with laser beams so hot and so fast that that casing is going to basically explode instantaneously. Now, when that fuel, or when the casing around the fuel explodes instantaneously outwards, there's an equal and opposite reaction inwards. It's kind of like having a rocket facing down on you in all directions. So that explodes outwards, it presses inwards on the blue fuel. And that fuel, that third picture there, gets confined down to an incredibly small space. Ultra high density, ultra high temperature, ultra high pressure, and the last picture over there you see that simulates pressures and temperatures like you find in a star. And out of this, this pressure is in this heat and pressure and force is enough to overcome those strong nuclear forces that we talked about and push something like deuterium and tritium together to get some mass difference, direct mass to energy conversion thousand times more energy than fission bam all that heat comes out we collect it it heats up the outside of the reactor or some other apparatus we use that heat to do the normal stuff to you know turn turbines with steam and stuff like that so what happened well um and i'm going off of uh the original super nerd matter beam he pointed me to his thread on this because he's a very smart individual and he broke it down with math, and I like that. So what happened at this facility now, what, what's been an issue is that we haven't been able to get more energy out of the reactor than we've put in, right? And that's the real goal. Because if we're putting in more energy than we get out, we're just wasting energy, right? And the, the hope is, with something so energy efficient, this could, if we figure out the right equipment, the right efficiencies, we can have basically limitless energy. So as, um, as Matterbeam says in his Twitter thread that I'm now reading, is that... Right now, if you take what has been done, about 422 megajoules of electricity create a one point... Here, I'll show you. I need you to see what's actually happening. So a bunch of lasers come in to the fuel point. They heat up the casing in billionths of a second. Heats up that casing, pressures it down explosion, all that stuff. You can't be in the same room as this when this happens, by the way. You'll get irradiated. And it's very bad for you. So you have a 1.8 megajoule laser. About 0.15 megajoules is actually absorbed by this target you're seeing here. And then from that 1. Uh, 0.15 megajoules, 1.3 megajoules has come out. This is the big news. That from 0.1 megajoules in, they got one megajoule out. So that's really good. That's more energy out of this capsule than was put into the capsule. The problem right now is that using all of these giant lasers as you're seeing now, using all these giant lasers takes a lot of energy, like 400 megajoules. So, as Matterbeam points out, right now, even though they've 
broken some sort of barrier. There's some milestone here of getting more energy out than they've put in. However, the energy that uh, into the capsule, the energy that they're putting into the laser is still 230 times more energy than they're getting out, which is a problem. However, um, as Matterbeam points out, with a number of current technologies, you could get you could get this gap, this gain gap, as he calls it, um, with current technologies, not this, not this building, uh, more efficient shapes to the capsule, um, better lasers um, that fire at better increment, at much quicker increments, faster increments rather. You could get this gap from, you know, two hundred times. You have to put in two hundred times what you get out to like less than two, like 1.8 times. If used every good thing that we, we've thought up so far in terms of fusion. So it still means we still have to put almost two times the amount of energy, even with theoretical, theoretically with our current technology, you still have to put like two times the amount of energy in that you'll get out. However, that means we're really close or we're getting a lot closer. Once we have the right technologies and the right implementation of those technologies, the gain gap doesn't become any times. It becomes you get more energy out than you put in. And once we really lock that down, if we ever lock that down, that is when we will have more or less access to unlimited power. Now, I see some of you in the chat saying... Um, Holy cow, I caught one of these live! Yes. Are we going to have this in our lifetime? I don't know. Um, at every step in the process, you're fighting entropy. You're fighting inefficiencies. Nothing is 100% efficient. It can't be. Um, I mean, there's physical principles that say, like, you can't... A perfect heat engine, you can't get 100% of the energy out of it. Even if you got this amazing fusion reactor to work, you still can't get 100% of that energy turning turbines to create electricity. You just can't. The universe won't let you. Wayne Gowland said, fusion is a decade away. Oh, okay. So uh, about 10 years from now, according to Wayne, uh, we'll have one of this, but we'll have one of these, but this was a big step forward. It's not world changing. We don't have the fusion reactors yet, but it is... Something to keep an eye on. In 10 years, just like Wayne says. And when has a guy named Wayne ever lied to anybody? Keep change I keep changing my... Kevin, the transition's not working. Uh, Doran Misenero, uh, Misenko says, Oh, hi there, Kyle. How you doing? I did not hit her. I did not. Um... Isn't there a saying that fusion is always 10 years away? Uh, <laughs> Z, Z1, the mad person I was describing yesterday. Hello, Kyle. Nice to see you again. Ulster, yesterday on stream, you could not read my message. I said it was nice of you to read my name out loud over the internet. It's not like I have a username to hide behind for a reason. Z, I'm sorry that I outed what your actual name is because I got the Twitch notifications wrong. I read, like, the email instead of your username. Z, I sent you an email. Check your email. I sent you a personal email. I'm saying, hey, hey, buddy, I'm sorry. Thank you for your tremendous support of this facility, as you can see. If you want me to delete the VOD on Twitch, I will. I get it. But Z comes in here almost every week now with another five... Look, if you don't know Z... Z, Z, similar to Sparks, similar to Sparky, Z wakes up, he gets, he gets, he gets a custom superbike Ducati, uh, Ducati in between his legs. He starts barreling down the highways. No speed limits. Why? He owns the highways. What does he do? Nobody knows. Unlimited money. A, a Tommy Wiseauian amount of money. He sees kittens on the side of the road. He throws $200 at the kitten. He sees... He sees uh, workers working on uh, another off-ramp for his highway. 
they take their hats off, hard hats off, they open them up, he throws another $400 in there. He arrives at our $1.5 billion facility, he sees my dumb face, throws another $500 at it. Z is a, is a lunatic. In that, he owns the moon. <laughs> Z, I don't know what you do for a living, but cut me in on it. Uh, Cody Nays bit with the 10 says, Kyle, I'm outside of your facility right now. I have a delivery of plaques for you. Sorry if they've been so delayed. You know, COVID stuff. Hope you didn't need to award to award these to anyone. Uh, Cody. Cody, this is the 66th week in a row that we haven't been able to give someone a plaque. Oh, you just need the door code. I'll DM you. I'm going to slide into your DMs with a code. Rancor, with the five, says, Hey Kyle, if there was no friction, would you be able to talk or even pump blood through your body? <laughs> I don't know. No? Um, superfluids, when you, when you chill down helium, super, super, and... Uh, You'll see where I'm going. When you chill down helium to like near absolute zero, a weird thing happens. It goes to literally zero viscosity. And with zero viscosity, and, and it will react to literally any sort of shear force. At zero viscosity, this super cooled helium will start just climbing the walls of a container and escaping. Would that happen to your blood with no friction? Yeah, all your blood would just ooze out of your body. Hey, smart bot. No, I don't know. Would, would no friction still be responsive to a pressure gradient? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Mika Sterling with the nine says, Hey, smart boy, Kyle. Hey. Been a casual watcher over the years since before the luscious locks. Ooh, dark times. Since being stuck in the black void. Ooh, black times. I just came to show the appreciation for a funny man doing cool science things. Well, I appreciate that. Um, Inazuma, as usual with the 10, says, Hey Kyle, as always, I love the show. Prove it. Oh, you did. Question this week is, if time is affected by gravity, do we have any data on if time throws, flows <laughs> Do we have any data on if time flows differently on Jupiter or even a neutron star? Yes. Um, you can calculate that. Time dilation is affected. Oh, I, time dilation is dependent on high velocity and also high gravity. So you can do the gravitational time dilation equation for a certain mass and how far away you are from that mass. Uh, go to wolframalpha.com, type in gravitational time dilation, and you give your own mass, give Jupiter's mass, um, give the radius, uh, the distance you are away from the center of mass, make it the radius of, of Jupiter, and you can calculate uh, how much time would slow down for you. Me with a 149, Oh, grin again with the 1999. I would say fusion is really cool, but it's actually pretty hot. Also, do you think your collab with J Laser Video to wield his Tesla coil powered Thor hammer? I don't know who that is. So no, I don't collab with anyone I don't know. Plus, if I do a Tesla coil Thor's hammer, the hacksmith, James Hobson, is going to be like, but I did it first. James, I know. Okay. But you're copying my hairstyle now. So what do you have to say about that? I did that first. Think about it before you talk stuff. Um... Dang, you, uh, N says, dang, you can do all this on Wolfram? Gravitational time dilation? Yeah. Wolfram, when I do math, which I haven't, which I don't do as much on, on the facility channel, which I, which I don't, which I should. But I'm just so tired of pop culture stuff. You know what I mean? Anyway. Um, Wolfram Alpha is the site that I use for everything. It does conversions. Like, Sorry. You can put an entire complicated equation in, and it will just make all the units work for you. You don't even have to convert beforehand. It's crazy. Um, 
Isaac says, one day, too, I shall simp for Kyle's glorious beard. Eh, it's kind of gross. I haven't shaved in a year. I mean, I've been trimming, so it's not crazy. But Danny Hodson says, hey, Kyle, I'm doing an English school project, and I chose Fusion. It is the future of energy because it's interesting, and I wanted to include records and statistics, so this was actually really helpful. Thank you. In your school project, I want you to cite this video. Finally, I'm a source. <laughs> uh, glorious, I say. Um, nerdy Loki, as you can see right here. The Australian $20 says, Hey Kyle, do you think cold fusion is possible for a power source use, you legend? Uh, no. Hans and Fleischmann? Were those the guys who tried to trick the whole scientific community with cold fusion? It seems to be against what we know is possible in the known universe to have cold fusion. Now, when you say cold fusion, it's kind of misleading to the average ear because cold fusion doesn't mean, like, absolute zero fusion. Well, it can. Anyway, cold fusion means... And it's the same as saying not super hot fusion. So do you know how we were just talking about we try to recreate the pressure and temperature that you find in, like, stars? Well, cold fusion would be that, but super, 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 super cold, relatively speaking. Like, you could have it on your desk. So your desk temperature relative to a star's temperature is cold. Extremely cold. That's what cold fusion is. Question from the Vodlands from Brian. How close could a planet get to Earth before it became a problem? Like, how big would it look in the sky? Um, the planet, de it depends on the planet size. It really depends on the planet size. I mean, like, the moon already creates tides and other stuff. And it, 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 it significantly gravitationally affects the planet at the distance that it is, and it's a small moon. If something like Jupa Jupe was at the distance of the moon, it would wreak havoc on the planet. So it depends on the size of the planet and how close it is. Smaller, it can be closer. Larger, it has to be farther away. Um, yeah, that's all I can say. Uh, Ray, good luck with the Australian $20. Where are... Yeah, it's me. You have... Uh, yeah, it's me. You have call ID. Um, quick question. Um, could you look at the security panel, uh, number four, please? Is the Australian, is the electric fence tuned for Australians? Because we have a lot of Australians getting in here. Oh. Well, yeah, um, just turn it. Yeah, if it's on, yeah, if it's on, uh, Canberra right now, turn it to Sydney. Or Opera House. Turn it to Opera House, they'll really be screaming. <laughs> you get it? Shut up. Bye. Love you. Um, Where was I? Who am I? What's happening? Ray, good luck with the Australian $20. Says, g'day from Woomera, Outback Australia. Back in the day, it was the second biggest spaceport behind Cape Canaveral. I thought it's more like Hunts, I, uh, though I think it's more like Huntsville. Haha, <laughs> so cool to finally catch a live stream. Ray, thank you so much for being here. Um, that was good. That was pretty good Australian right there. Um, we tend to launch rockets as close to the equator as we can because the rotation, uh, the angular velocity is the highest at the equator and we want to give the rocket as much of a head start as we can that's why did you know that because the rocket's eventually going to have to orbit this way and so we try to give it as much of a velocity boost relative to uh, the planet as we can that's why i think i think that's right oh man 
Cheech. Oh, and we'll we gotta get on to the next episode, the latest episode of the facility. But Cheech Ola with the Australian thirty one ninety nine. Good day, Kyle. Yep, another Australian. Kevin, tune it to Opera House. There's too many Australians getting in. What is this Hollywood? It is. No, it's not. Chichola. No science question today, but since I'm hungry, what's your favorite potato chip variant? I think mine is hash browns, but I ain't got no type. Cheers, you legend. Oh, favorite potato variant. Um, I like a good curly fry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a weirdo. Peer review. So as I'm wont to do on every episode of Office Hours, I go to the latest episode of the facility, go to comments below, find something that made me go, hey, well, what? And then I award you with a plaque, which I've been told by chat is here now, today. All of them. Then I make you an honor member of the facility, which no one has taken me up on yet. All you have to do is message me somewhere. And then... That's all that happens. <laughs> the latest episode of the facility, we talked about how to do your research online, how to actually read a scientific paper and argue with people on the internet who tell you to do your own research. Um, if you want to watch that video, go back to the YouTube channel. I did it exactly in the style of the Krusty Krab training video from SpongeBob. And if you're around my age, you know that's one of the best SpongeBob episodes. So go check it out. But let's see what you had to say. Um, Christine says, I'm so glad I had to take classes in research methodology and statistical al analysis for my BA in psychology. Fun fact, um, a lot of science majors don't take any course in statistics and research methodology. I didn't take any statistics or research methodology classes until I was taking my master, uh, doing my master's program. And that wasn't even in science. That was in, uh, communication, um, science communication. So, yeah, like, even very intelligent, smart, sciencey types don't get statistical classes. And so it's hard to evaluate what p-values mean and what's a, what's a good number for a survey and, and stuff like that. Um, Brian C.S., that was fantastic. I'd love to see more episodes like this. Well, I can only rip off SpongeBob so much. Um... Zarzification says, thank you for this video. I wish more people would be more critical of the information they come across. If they were, we wouldn't have to report bad info because like a strong immune system, people would quickly identify it as bad and get and would, it would get ignored. If you can tell, can you tell I've had caffeine? Um, yeah, um, learning how to identify bad information is like being, it's a vaccine against bullshit. <laughs> It's like getting inoculated. Um, but today, I think because I need to show my appreciation for teachers all around the world who are doing what I do, except better, in a more difficult position. I'm giving this to Johnny Martin today, who may or may not be a lounge singer in Vegas. Johnny Martin. I'll be using this in my lectures with first-year undergrad undergraduates. Thank you, Science Thor, Johnny. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you something here. So now, so you show please show that video to your undergraduates, and then also show this clip to your undergraduates. Um. Hey, undergraduates, thank you so much for watching that video. Your professor definitely didn't pay me to make that video and show it to you or pay me to say this. I just want to say, be nice to him because being a teacher is hard. And uh, the only thing that stands between him and crying in front of all of you is like two or three bad reviews. So be nice to be nice to Mr. Martin, Dr. Martin. Thanks. <laughs> Man, I'm getting delirious. I'm not having a Johnny, 
Johnny Martin. I know, that could have been better and funnier. I'm just, I probably should have eaten some food today. How about some water? Johnny Martin, you are now indeed an honorary member of the facility. And now, you get a plaque, which is right there. Don't tell. Don't. That's not a plaque. That is Kevin. You have you have to work on your object permanent permanence, man. That is not a plaque. That is a Graph Gear 500 by Pentel. Graph Gear, probably the only pencil you'll ever need, with a weighted end, stippled grip, and eraser right underneath the metal end. You can graph like your life depended on it, and often it does. <laughs> okay, I'll be right back. We have salts you're seeing right there with the 20 Australian 20 I, I think we're just gonna have to post sentry guns on the perimeter these Australians are finding their way you want Australians that's how you get Australians Salts with the Australian $20 says hey Kyle love the show if we put quantum lock experiments in space separated by 1.5 billion meters which is 1.5 million kilometers. Assuming we can record results instantly, they should be about five seconds apart. Could we use this to test the speed limit of information? No. The thing about spooky action as, at a distance is that it can theoretically act faster than light. That is, if you put two particles and you quantum entangle them let's say two electrons one spin up and one spin down or or two electrons you entangle them they don't have a state yet they could be spin up or spin down you separate them by 1.5 billion meters and then you measure one back on earth if that spin up the other one will instantly be spin down and it will be spin down faster than the speed of light would allow. But Kyle, how is that possible with the speed of light being a, a, a universal speed limit? Well, <laughs> information is not actually being transmitted. Um, according to the no communication theorem in quantum mechanics, you can't transmit information with this spooky action at a distance this way. So the speed of information, to answer your question, Salts, is the speed of information is the speed of light. It's a hard and fast rule. You're turning me in, into an Australian person. Just because I look Australian doesn't mean I want to be Australian. I do. I want to go surfing. Jason Lowenthal with the five. Every time I see your picture, Jason, you look like a young Gabe Newell from Valve. And I like it. Kyle, a Kevin just materialized in my kitchen. He has a bright blue spots all over his skin and one arm is bigger than the other. Can he stir my dinner? Um, he may have had a genetic encounter with a blue ringed octopus. I would stay away. I've seen a lot of pictures. I've seen a couple of pictures now on Reddit of people holding a blue ringed octopus. Those people are this close to dying. Very silly. Um... James Xenophoto says the tactical bucket needs more recognition. Yes, everyone, uh, tactical bucket in the chat. Making sure security is very tight here. Appreciate that, of course. Benjamin Cook with the 20 says, I came across reports that painting roads white make people feel seven degrees warmer by contrast to black. Huh. I don't care about their sensibilities, but is it reflecting 
Is it reflecting as we'd have hoped to lower temperatures? Is it reflecting as... Well, if you paint a road all white, it is, it is actually going to reflect more radiation. And people will feel hotter because they will be hotter. Um, the road itself won't be as hot. More energy will be reflected into space rather than being absorbed by the dark asphalt. And that's what we do to try to balance the energy equation in terms of climate change. We want more energy exiting the planet and not as much being trapped here by greenhouse gases. Um, so you'd want... So that makes sense to me. I'm not sure what the what the question is. But that that's also... When you hear about these dangerous positive feedback loops in the Arctic, for example, um, as the planet warms, glaciers melt, and these, these white snowy areas, they go away, and so there's not as much reflection from them back into space of this space radiation from the sun. And as that happens, it gets hotter, which means less snow and ice, then it gets hotter and gets less snow, so it could be a runaway feedback loop in that way. Um, so that's why you... An idea would be to paint road surfaces, parking lots, the, the, the roofs of buildings white to get more energy into space. And so people feeling hotter after that makes sense. Maybe it's because I streamed yesterday. I don't know. I feel crazy. Oren Wilford says, where did your background music come from? I swear I've heard it somewhere else. Can't say. It's definitely not royalty free. It's very expensive custom music. <laughs> Blard Flips, Blard Fip says, albedo for days, baby. Um, Jack Macklin detective with eyes the five dollar says first time watching and i'm instantly a fan great content thanks kyle hey jake hey kill come on in as you can see the blast doors wide open come in sit down we have a lot of chairs too many chairs honestly sit down and hopefully i won't lose my mind live in a recorded format that love that lives forever Hopefully, we'll have some sort of educational entertainment. When? Who can say? Sheev Palpatine, with the five, says, Do you think emus would be more effective than century guns at keeping Australians out of the chat? Yes. Those dinosaurs are terrifying. I wouldn't want to fight an emu. You couldn't make me fight an emu. You'd have to pay me. Fifty... 50,000 Australian dollars. Twinge with a 199 gives me a thumbs up. Twinge, the second you learn how to use a keyboard, it's going to be a good day. Count Duke, what is happening? Sheev Palpatine, now Count Dooku. I'm going to have Sir... That's not how he sounds. I'm going to have surgery. I'm really afraid... Oh, this is serious. Are you okay, Count? This is... <laughs> I thought it was going to be another joke thing, and then I read your surgery comment, and now I look like a... Count Dooku says, I'm going to have a surgery. I'm really afraid of anesthesia, even though I know it's very safe, but I'm still scared. It's on average. Good hospital, good anesthesiologist. You should be fine. The scary stuff you hear about it, very, very, very rare. You should be fine... And if, and, and if you're going in for a high-risk something, they will tell you about that. And then it's up to you whether or not you want to do that. Um, but you got this. Stay, stay, just... <sighs> Let me put it this way. What could... If you're having surgery for something, I'm guessing that even if something bad happened with your, anesthe your anesthetic, it wouldn't be as bad as if you didn't get surgery for that thing. Think of it as like a cost-benefit, right? Anesthe General anesthesia is crazy. 
and I don't want to talk about it too much because I don't want to freak you out. But, <laughs> but when I was under general anesthesia, it's such a weird thing to have your consciousness just like completely interrupted. Like, like jump cut. It's like a real life jump cut where I, I went, I, <laughs> cause that was really interesting. I was having surgery and I was talking to all the nurses and the doctors. I'm like, Hey, what are you guys doing? They're like, we're going to put this thing in you and it's going to feel cold. I'm like, Oh, that's crazy. Oh, yep. Oh, yep. That does feel cool. And then the, the instant I remember going dark is the same instant I woke up. And when I woke up, I was like, Whoa, wow, ugh, what, ugh. my throat was sore. Cause I was intubated. I was like, what happened? They're like, you've been asleep for four hours. I'm like what? It's like ceasing to exist, and that's always an interesting sensation. Because even when you're sleeping, you have some, if you're dreaming, you have some awareness that you're not, that you haven't ceased to exist, obviously. But with general anesthetic, you're just gone. Not so bad. Uh, we're at the end of the stream. I gotta catch Music Central Piano 29 as usual with the 50 says, keep up the great... Uh, I need to eat something. Keep up the great work, Kyle. Stay safe and rational. Always, my man. Or my lady. Or my dude. Or my dudette. Or my they. Or my person. I'm guessing Kevin turned away the plaque delivery today. That's going to be pretty expensive. He did not. Just put it in storage. You. I'm sorry I yelled at you. Thank you so much to everyone who joined me today. Thank you to all the glorious Super Chatters. Um, thank you so much for supporting what we do here at the facility, which is trying to educate and entertain to the very best of our ability. The next episode at the facility, um, it's not going to be a live stream. It's going to be... Oh, ooh, ooh, it's an interesting one this week. This week, I am in, I am, I'm giving you a challenge. We here at the facility are launching our own challenge where I will where you are up to win thank you cyber player for the 10 you are I'm going to announce a little challenge and if you undertake the challenge and you win I will give you thousands of dollars no joke anyone can join anyone can enter it's going to be a video submission like 60 seconds we're going to launch a little contest I want I will I am annoyed by something in popular culture and I want to put it to you to try to come up with a better thing to show in pop culture. What thing is that, Kyle? I will show you this Thursday or Friday. Probably Friday. It's going to be a shorter video, but it's because it's going to be a challenge and I want to hear from you. I want to see your submissions. Might be interesting. And again, I will pay you thousands of dollars if you win. I will. It's because I want to give back to you giving to me, supporting the work that we're, do here, that we're doing here. Thank you so much for joining me. Like I said twice already, third time's a charm. If you want to continue on this conversation after the stream is done, VOD's going to be on the YouTube channel. You can go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill. Join the facility today. Join our Discord. Lurk, talk, post, meme. Do whatever you want to do. See videos early, like this challenge video that I'm going to do, which means I have to put up that website even earlier now that I'm thinking about it. You can also follow me on Twitch where we're playing through Bioshock Remastered. We're having a <laughs> really weird, fun time playing that game. We're going to be doing much more with Twitch as we get more integrated with Twitch as a service. I'm in contact with people at Twitch. We're going to be doing it big and fun there going forward. So get in. We're going to be we're, right now. We're playing Bioshock. We played Sekiro. We're going to be playing Fallout 4. We're going to be playing Half-Life 2. All classic science and science fiction games. Have a wonderful rest of your week. I will see you if you submit challenge submission. If you submit something to my challenge. I'll see you then. Until next time. Until I see you. Be nice to each other. Because this is all we got as my hands so obviously indicated. Take care.